Uh, hi, uh, my name is Vishal Shah. Uh, I am the founder and chief scientist at QSpin Inc. Uh, in this talk, I will provide an overview of our ongoing work on developing and commercializing a portable non cryogenic MEG system, a magneto encephalography system. Uh, QSpin is a small company uh, founded in 2012. As a company, our ultimate objective is to build and commercialize a complete uh, state-of-the-art MEG system built using non-cryogenic uh, sensors. Our funding comes from NIH and DOD, and in recent years, a substantial portion of our funding uh, comes from internally uh, from revenue gener generated from our commercialization efforts. Uh, our MEG technology is based on optically pumped magnetometers, or OPMs. Uh, you've already heard about OPM technology from previous talks today, so I will not go into the details, uh, but very briefly, unlike superconducting sensors used in MEG today, uh, the most exciting thing about OPMs is that they can operate at room temperature. And this room temperature uh, operation opens up many new avenues to improve neuroimaging uh, or MEG fundamentally in many respects. Uh, at a fundamental level, uh, the OPM is a very simple device. Uh, it has only three components. Uh, one is a tiny semiconductor laser. One is a, second is a glass box containing some rubidium metal vapor. Uh, and this metal vapor acts as a magnetic field sensing medium. And then a photo detector, which converts optical signals into a usable electrical signal that functions as the output of the magnetometer. Uh, the technology is relatively old, several decades old in fact, uh, but only now is it coming online and this is because of many recent advances uh, that have come together almost at the same time in the last decade. Recent advances in atomic physics, in laser technology, in packaging and digital electronics all of these things had to mature to the level that they are today for the technology to be become suitable for MEG. So that's why uh, we are now hearing more and more about OPM technology. Uh, as a company, we got our start uh, thanks to a small NIH phase one SBIR research grant. Uh, in this phase one project, uh, we developed a couple of rudimentary prototype OPM sensors. We call them Gen Zero sensors. And uh, the key thing about these sensors was that the sensitivity was very, very close to what squid magnetometers would can achieve, around five or six femtotesla per root hertz. The prototypes were sufficiently compact, uh, and they had integrated optics and coils. And these things made uh, the sensors uh, uh, usable, uh, easily usable, and one could place them over the head and start collect recording MEG data. And so we did that. And uh, this uh, uh, graph here shows auditory evoke responses that were obtained uh, with these uh, Gen Zero prototypes. The signal to noise ratio of uh, the response, response was just as good, if not better, uh, than what we measured with a squid based deck system. And so these results convinced NIH to fund the next bigger phase of funding. Uh, and so that's how things transition to a higher gear at QSpin. Uh, by the end of our phase two project, we succeeded in making a commercial grade version of our phase one prototype. Uh, we call this our Gen 1 uh, sensor. This sensor was a massive advance in many respects. Uh, the fiber optics and some of the other crazy laboratory grade components, they were all eliminated and replaced with things that were a whole lot more robust. And this made the technology finally, uh, it made it finally possible to bring this technology outside of the laboratory and make turn it into a real commercial product. We also included a microprocessor and developed some uh, advanced software algorithms. And so for the first time, the center or OPMs could be used uh, by someone who is not a physics graduate student, but a, anyone who is a non-specialist in the field can just take the sensor and start recording some data inside a magnetic or shielded room. Uh, so this made it possible for neuroscientists, neuroscientists to 
independently validate, uh, evaluate and validate the technology and provide an unbiased and honest opinion on uh, the uh, state of the technology and the potential and its potential future. So as soon as the neuroscientists, they got access to the technology that changed everything that uh, supercharged progress in the field because now we were collaborating with many, many groups simultaneously. And uh, they, we started getting invaluable guidance uh, for continued technology development. Uh, this picture is from uh, uh, an experiment at the University of Nottingham uh, by Matthew Brooks and his group. And in the experiment, uh, uh, they show that even with just a handful of these OPM sensors, you can build a MEG system with squid MEG like performance. And that too, let's say, uh, while you're drinking some tea. So it's a fairly big advance. And slowly, we started getting a lot of feedback on the sensors and all the things that needed to be improved. And one of the big things uh, on the wish list was a desire to uh, reduce the size and weight of the sensors. And for that reason, in 2018, uh, we developed uh, our uh, second generation or Gen 2 sensor. And the second generation sensor was five times smaller and it weighed just three grams. Here's a picture of our second generation sensor. One thing worth mentioning is that despite making the sensor head smaller, uh, we did not have to compromise its performance. In fact, we managed to slightly improve its performance over just the Gen 1 sensor. Uh, so, because the Gen 2 sensors are very lightweight uh, and because they can be mounted on an EG like cap, uh, one can build a makeshift MEG system. Uh, with EEG like form factor. This photo here uh, is a EEG cap with 50 OPM sensors. This work is again from University of Nottingham. Uh, the performance of this prototype system has been compared one on one with squid based MEG system, and the results look very promising indeed uh, for the OPM system. In the last three years since commercialization of our sensors, there have been 50 plus publications that have investigated uh, every aspect of the sensor technology and suitability for MEG in minute detail. Everything from head to head comparisons with other gold standard technologies, measuring signals from structure deep inside the brain, such as hippocampus and cerebellum, uh, source localized accuracy of the source localization uh, with the system, uh, ability ability to detect epilept epileptic activity. Uh, and all ex results from all of these experiments are, from and, and in pub which are in publication, are highly encouraging. For example, the most recent publication is on measuring resting state functional connectivity with a 50 center prototype OPM system that you just saw in the previous slide. Uh, being able to measure functional connectivity is something that is at the frontiers in neuroimaging today. And being able to do that, being able to do something like this with a new technology and with such high resolution speaks very strongly about technology readiness, readiness level of OPM MEG. Uh, so now that it has become clear that some of the major technical hurdles have been overcome, the next step is to build a complete MEG system, one that is truly ready for clinical neuroscience research. We are calling this our Gen 3 project. Uh, this is very much an ongoing project right now. Uh, the Gen 3 project includes not just sensor improvements, uh, but the development of a tightly integrated ecosystem of hardware and software uh, that form a complete MEG system. We hope or we expect that the complete MEG system uh, we'll have around 300 channels, uh, which is roughly the same as the state of art, as, as the state of the art squid based make system in channel count. Uh, we expect the system will be portable and will have much form factor, much like an EEG system. There will be a fancy helmet, not like the one shown here, but one that has precise sensor code registration ability to give you sense, precise sensor code registration data and has advanced features and capable management so that there aren't uh, 
hundreds of cables poking out of the helmet. Also, the electronics will be nice and sufficiently compact uh, that it can be mounted inside a lightweight ba backpack that weighs less than, let's say, half a kilogram and suitable for even children. And if things were as planned, uh, slightly less ambitious, ambitious versions of Gentry system will be installed in a few select labs uh, before the end of this year. With Gen3, our main target user base are research labs. Uh, and hopefully, once the technology matures a little bit more by 2025, uh, we will be in a position to get FDA approvals uh, to use the system for clinical management. There isn't uh, too much time to talk about the Gen3 project, uh, but just a few quick sites. Uh, the sensor head will be roughly the same uh as gen 2 in size and weight uh but we'll have some really nice upgrades for example we expect the gen 3 sensor will be able to measure all three orthogonal components of the magnetic field instead of just two components of the field in gen 2. Uh, we are also fixing some of the outstanding issues uh from gen 2 such as improving low frequency stability of the sensor and re reducing mutual sensor sensor mutual interference issues that we've encountered a uh, so little bit in Gen 2. Uh, one physical difference between the Gen 3 and the Gen 2 sensor is that the Gen 3 sensor will feature a connector that will allow individual sensors to be quickly swapped in and out of the system. And the connector may not feel like such a big thing, but it really has a transformative effect on the overall MEG architecture. But Besides these, aside from these minor sensor upgrades, uh, by far the biggest thing that we are focusing on in Gen 3 is on trying to make it a lot more robust, like industrial grade robust. We're also hoping to make it a lot easier to manufacture. So that we are able to produce these at the rate of thousands per year without any significant infrastructure upgrades at our end. The other key uh, part of our Gen 3 product is electronics miniaturization. Uh, the Gen 1, Gen 2 electronics uh, shown in this, in the, the, the black box uh, shown in this image here, uh, was itself a massive step forward in terms of miniaturization from laboratory grade electronics uh, that we were used to or everyone else in the field is used to. And having a small box like that made things really, uh, 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 possible for the technology to advance forward. Uh, and in Gen 3, we are going another step forward or multiple steps forward and shrinking down the Gen 2 electronics many, many uh, significantly, uh, significantly further uh, and making the size of an SD card. And so with this, we expect that at this level of initialization, the complete electronics for OPM can be placed inside a backpack. Uh, another key aspect of the technology that we and also a number of other research groups uh, really are working on is developing an advanced OPM helmet. Uh, and this OPM helmet, it really needs to meet several criteria. For example, the sensor, the helmet has to provide a precise core registration data, which is where the sensors are placed with respect to the head. It should be very easy to mount and dismount so that the subject preparation is almost uh, non-existent. It should fit all head sizes so that you can scan not just adults, but also children of any age. Hopefully, it eliminates all kinds of sensor hand handling and to improve the system longevity. And uh, the helmet should be very lightweight and should be cost effective. Uh, Going on to some of my final thoughts, uh, it appears that OPM MEG truly has the potential to become the gold standard for new imaging. Uh, the progress that has been made to date in the field is an accumulation of decades of basic science research and sustained engineering efforts. This progress is really the work of many. And one more thing that I'd like to mention is that there is significant room for further technical improvement to the technology. Uh, and so this guaranteed continued system evolution in years and decades to come. 
Uh, one really important thing that I like to emphasize that I cannot emphasize enough is that none of this would have been possible without funding and support from NIH. So a massive, huge thanks for making all of this possible. And I'd also like to uh, thank our brilliant collaborators uh, at UCL, University of Nottingham, Wisconsin, and really many, many other labs all around the world uh, uh, who are investing so much of the time and effort in evaluating this technology and giving us feedback uh, to hopefully move the technology needle forward. Thank you.